All right, guys, and welcome to Get Bit, the podcast for blurs, nerds, and everybody that has a fandom that is always welcome here. I'm your host, Most Will Buchanan, um, and of course, right beside me is uh, Joe. Joe, how's you doing tonight, man? Okay, did we count me as co-host yet, or what? <laughs> yeah, at this point, you are reaching that status, but <laughs> at this point, you are reaching that status, but um, but yeah, but you know All you're right. always... high-pitched hero intern Joe Tanella. Hello, how are you? High-pitched intern. That high-pitched intern. That threw me off for a second. High-pitched intern. That means... <laughs> That being said, guys, uh, like I said before, this is a family-friendly podcast. Although we do, although sometimes uh, we do let certain uh, language come out. Um, it's just the way it is. Uh, but everything else we do show is definitely family-friendly because I did want to show the Suicide trailer, uh, Suicide Squad trailer, but um, unfortunately, the only Squad trailer out right now is Red Band. And uh, for anybody that doesn't know what Red Band is, Red Band is the unedited. Uh, uncensored you're gonna see everything situation and because we are a family friendly podcast we cannot show it but I will sit there and tell you guys that it is available on YouTube and um, and I'm gonna let that I'm gonna I'm gonna let Joe take about this one as well as well as I do because uh, guys uh, Suicide Squad number one is freaking awesome um, I cannot be mad about what James Gunn is doing I think he is going to um, really, really, really surprise us um, with uh, what's going to be done and the direction he's taking and the fact that he's introducing so many different original Suicide Squad or Task Force X, if you believe that, if you want to go that route. But um, but it is just, I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be great. Uh, but Joe, you've seen the trailer. What did you think? Uh, we know Mongal's not going to meet it for very long because we saw her somewhere else. Oh yeah, she was. <laughs> that was interesting. That was a that was almost a what happened situation. Uh, no, I enjoyed it. Uh, I like who they've already. We don't have to speculate who the big villain is. Uh, we know who the big villain is. Of course, Harley's still going to be uh, probably the third central character out of two. I'm expecting. Bloodshot, and we definitely know Peacemaker is probably the other central focus character because he's getting his own spinoff. Pretty much, yeah. Oh yeah, we know uh, Peacemaker. I mean, you saw Peacemaker, and I was like, and a lot of people hate on John Cena, but I'm gonna be honest, I like it. I think the whole idea of Peacemaker and a and a John Cena type, because the be honest, the, the guy can do funny. I think he doesn't. I mean, yes, he's a he's a you know love him or hate him as a professional wrestler, but. I still think, for the simple fact of the matter, um, he will do well as peace as peacemaker. Um, but I do love the fact of just how serious, like he takes on the mantle of peacemaker so much that as he's sitting there talking with a uh, you yourself as a blood sport character, it's like I'm it it, it it draws you in. It really does. So and then and then it's a, it's funny to see Weasel to see Weasel walk out of nowhere. That itself is going to be interesting to me, but. But that's just me. Like I said before, we I know we can't really go into it, and I know I would love to play the trailer for it, but again, it's Red Band. We can't really play it here. Um, but if you go on YouTube and you go up there and you can watch it, trust me, it's out there for the world to see. Um, but I just wanted to get that little tidbit out because the Suicide Squad trailer actually released uh, released actually in the early parts of this morning. Um, so a lot of people are just now getting that to that. So, um, with that being said, we are going to go into the CW shows of the week. Um, uh, because of March Madness, uh, uh, there was not a Black Lightning episode this week. Um, we are thankful for that. I hate to say that because it's just been, this final season has just been terrible. It's been terrible. Let's call it what it is. Um, and Batwoman, just to go ahead and get this out the way, because Batwoman, speaking of terrible, uh, episode eight was titled "Survive Much Worse," in which I guess this is spoiler alert. So if you if you had your heart set on watching Batwoman this week, um, now would be a good time to probably not pay attention to us. Uh, see, reason being, um, "Survive Much Worse" was supposed to be the I guess the close to the not to the end, but I guess it's hyping up toward the end. And of course, we see that of course Sophia lied about having Kate Kane. 
Um, Alice killing the man she loved because she thought that would she thought that would get cake. Um, the fact that Ryan was trying to get a desert rose to save herself because she was basically kryptonite poisoning. Um, Alice burning down the whole field of roses of desert roses uh, on the island, and of course. Uh, Kate, and of course, the one thing which everybody has come to in this situation is that Kate is alive. Um, in which I'm going to go to Joe about this one because I'm going to go ahead and say this. We just cannot seem to let Kate go off this show. <laughs> it's like the whole story of Kate Kane just never will go away. But it's but I was telling Joe as we were discussing this before we came on before we actually came on the show, um, they are doing a little bit from post crisis, which again uh, eliminate the multiverse and put everybody on one Earth. So Kate Kane has been recasted, um, and as anybody was watching, if you're like me and you were watching the last episode of Batwoman, you saw that yes, in fact, Kate Kane is still alive and she's back in town. So. Um, Joe, what did you, I know you watched it. I mean, you probably got a short synopsis about Batwoman like I do, but what you got? Well, I mean, they are at least smart in saying that Kate Kane is the post-crisis version of it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, I'm barely hanging on as it is anyways. At this point, it's just kind of white noise in the background while either folding laundry or reading something. So Pretty much. Uh, I mean, I did hear news that we have officially cast a Black Mask, so maybe once he, we end this whole Alice stuff and start moving into Black Mask territory, I'll be more invested in the story, but right now, I, I honestly couldn't even give you a short summary. That's how little I paid attention this time. It's well, like, I, mean, I looked up, it's like, oh, there's post-crisis Kate, that's cool. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a simple fact, like I said, it just, it, you, you are just... It's one of those where the story itself is just not interesting. Like I said, it's basically white noise. Like you, like you actually just listen to it more for the sound, just for the sound of breaking silence than anything else. So I, I completely agree with that. Um, and I know some people, are, I had some people come back and say, you're just so wrong about Batwoman. Yep, I wasn't wrong about Snyderverse either, but you already get that. Um, <laughs> oh, there were so many people about Snyder. Oh, that, that's a whole other thing before I go into Flash. Look. Um, for all those, I need to say this because yes, uh, Snyderverse, the the Justice League cut of the Snyderverse. Let me go ahead and point this out. It was better than the original theatrical theatrical release of Justice League. I will completely agree with that. But just like Wonder Woman eighty four, it was too long of a story to tell within the setting. It was too long, and basically what that was it was basically a love letter to Snyder fans it was it was Snyder saying this is me giving what I would have done had I been given the time had I had no interference from corporate that's the story I would have told and now that I've told it I'm done and it is amazing to me because I see this I see this whole thing and I know Joe you've probably seen it where you see this uh, hashtag release the Snyderverse and I was so I was so worried because I'm not a fan of online bullying. I get it that as 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 fans, especially of Sonic the Hedgehog, because Sonic the Hedgehog was the first version where it was online bullying and uh, nobody blinked an eye. Where and it was case in point, it was true. I mean, we saw Sonic, we saw Sonic, and. We saw him the first time, and yeah, you would think with all that money and graphics in time, he didn't look right. I mean, let's just call it what it is. He's basically actually the actually he was a second version. He was actually the second form. I keep forgetting about Apocalypse. <laughs> I keep forgetting about Apocalypse. Apocalypse was the first fan reaction to where they sat there and said, "This is crappy. He doesn't look like Apocalypse. He looks like Ivan Ooze from Power Rangers." And I remember. Everybody was crapping on that, and then they come back and changed it to where it was a little bit more appropriate. I mean, it wasn't exactly Apocalypse, but it was appropriate. And I forgot, that was the first time we saw online bullying, and then the second time was Sonic the Hedgehog, in which they sat there and said, this is crap, and the studio went back and apologized, spent a few more months, and gave us a Sonic the Hedgehog we all liked. So, well... 
there's a bit more to it with that with Sonic. Even the Sega Japan uh, says like that's not Sonic. Change yeah. it. Yeah, even Sega, even Sega had an issue with it. You're right. Um, but the reason why I say all that is because now you have Snyder fans saying, "See, see, this the Snyder verse was great. See, see, we see he can do this." And I'm thinking to myself, it was watchable. It's like the first Suicide Squad. Watchable? Yes. Good? No. <laughs> the issue I have here with this is that he's fine. If you if he's not writing the full film, I honestly think he does a really good job with the exception of Sucker Punch. He made two watchable movies. Two decent watchable movies. No one's ever going to forget uh, Superman. Yeah, Man of Steel. Yeah, 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 Man of Steel. The, the biggest issue I have with Superman is not even him. It's with Kevin Costner being Pa Kent. That's just a whole thing on its own. That's fine. I That movie, to me, is fine. Um, they always bring up that Superman doesn't kill. I have personally watched in Superman the Animated Series... He kills Zod and Ursa in that series. That, I wanted to point that out too. I'm like, Superman has, Superman has quite he the body count. Literally kills Darkseid in, I think it's in, not, I think it's either in Superman the animated series. He kills yes. Darkseid. No, he kills uh, Darkseid in Justice League. Yeah. Just for Darkseid to resurrect in just and later on down the road. Oh, he's just so kill- breaking Zod's neck. That it bothers me, but I've seen Superman kill before. Yeah, the whole Kevin Costner character is what bothered me in that movie. Yeah, to say he doesn't kill, I I agree with that. I was, I was like, wait a minute, Superman Superman is much like Wonder Woman. There's a body count there. <laughs> Y'all just it's like a you very know, small body count, but there is a body count. Yeah. So the problem I have with BVS is that movie is completely unearthed. <laughs> but it's just, except for you don't go from the introduction of Superman to the death of Superman. Okay. You get at least one movie right there in the middle. And if you want to introduce Batman in his Dark Knight uh, Frank Miller form, that's fine. That's a version of Batman that fits most with the aesthetic of that universe. That's fine. Okay. But that movie faltered, and that's why they interfered with Justice League. Now, mm-hmm. Justice League, we know, and you and I both said it, that's not, that movie was not entirely his fault. True. Yeah. Uh, it made it on this version was fine. It made, like I said, it took it from a B to a C with me. It took what yours from an F to at least a C minus. Yeah, I, okay, gave, so I gave it a C minus. Yeah, we were fine with it, but this and no, he's actually perpetuating this now. Yeah, because yeah, he already said to me my armada, which I don't know what that what he thinks he's gonna do because he saw what happened. Because I, I that was the exact thing I was saying. Because he saw what happened with because the Snyder Cut, the Snyder Cut only got something because some Hollywood execs got behind it. All Mm -hmm. I mean, fans like to think that oh, we just spoke up really loud and we got this. No execs got behind this and said, "Wait a minute, how can we ban him?" And I was telling somebody else, I was telling some friends of mine, I said, "You guys got to understand, some Hollywood execs and some WB people sat there and said." How do we give the people what they want and hedge our bets at the same time? I said, we won't make this a theatrical release. We'll put this on HBO Max. And then we'll get a kickback from the subscribers. So it, so it, was a, so it really was a, a win-win situation for Warner Brothers, whether it flopped or not. Because they still were going to get the views. So I'm going to paraphrase something from another web, show, web TV web series I watch. Okay. Kind of pop. You're aware of it? Yeah, yeah. The other reason we got Snyderverse on HBO Max is because they needed something to give a proof of concept of people will come to HBO Max versus Netflix or Disney+. Plus. We need something to get people hooked in. We're going to start our same-day theater, same-day... HBO Max thing with this, even though it's not going to be in theaters. Right. I think actually there is going to be one in theaters. Justice is gray or something. Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the gray. It's supposed to be the black and white version. Sure. Um. And then we'll have that continue with Godzilla, which comes out next week, then later on down the road, Mortal Kombat. But yada the, yada yada. But the funny part is that was. I said that's why I said that's where Warner Brothers was smart. 
because mm-hmm. they know with coronavirus, not a lot of people going to movie theaters. So they knew they were smart in taking the safe bet and saying, we're going to take every one of these movies because Godzilla versus Kong. They know everybody's going to watch that. I'm already, I'm already know I'm going to watch that. Um, Mortal Kombat, also something that you're going to... I mean, you have people like myself they are going to be interested in investing in these movies, but they also know that subscribers, subscribers is now the new... Um, it's the new proof of success. Mm-hmm. So yes, I I completely agree that HBO Max need a vehicle to that HBO Max need a vehicle to prove subscribers and Warner Brothers needed to win. They need each other. I will completely agree with that. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's just the whole idea. But yeah, it's just the whole idea of just now what they try to do. And of course, Snyder versus saying we you know of course he tagged himself. We will go. We will do this by the old ways. I was like, guys, um, you will not. And especially with the head of Warner Brothers coming out and saying we are going in a different direction from Al- from Snyder, and everybody's like, "Oh, this is terrible! It is the worst decision." I said, "No, it's a very smart decision because now, now you're going from the Snyder verse. Does that mean that some things are going to be rewritten? Possibly. I mean, I can see some. I mean, Wonder Woman, the na- the third Wonder Woman, is going to be different. We already know that." We know the next Aquaman movie, even though it's successful on its own, yeah, it's going to be different. The Flash movie just turned around and recasted, uh, I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's wrong. They just casted who's going to play Barry Allen's father, Henry. Um, so we know that's coming down the pipeline. So, yeah, they're going to take different directions from it. I don't think it's bad. I think Warner Brothers is finally seeing the light. Now, it's going to depend on the next set of movies that come out, what they're going to do. But I think it's a smart thing to go away from the Snyderverse. So it is, but we also got to keep in mind that we are no longer the and the fandom. They say that the media franchise that is the movies for DC is an omniverse, is a multiverse. Yeah. So do that means to me they can leave that door open and they can go back to that Snyderverse if they want, in some way, shape, or form for media. And still give the people like me and you who are like, well, that we did that. It was fine. We like what they're doing over here a little bit more. So they'll give us that. Right. Then they can go give the other people that are over here and really want the Snyderverse what they want later on down the road. So, I mean, it's the best of both worlds. It's just one of those. A lot of people are just not looking at the grander picture of everybody's going to get what they want. Just not when they want it. And that's fine. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. That that's that is fair, but I just thought that was interesting as far as bringing that up. Uh, as far as them trying to bully their way into another Snyder into another Snyder movie, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, but I will go ahead and say, speaking of forward things that are happening, I was like I said, we were talking about the Flash. Of course, the last Flash episode, which was the quote unquote uh, season six finale episode, and now we're into the next uh, storytelling post uh, Mirror Monarch. Um, this episode called Central City Strong. Uh, of course, uh, this is mostly, like I said before, they're rebuilding in Central City past Mirror Monarch. Um, and I gotta admit about this one. I gotta admit about this story. Uh, this episode, I liked it. Even the fact of them using Abracadabra, which I was like, Abracadabra was not a villain that I did not think they could build the episode around. And they did. And it worked. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the fact of how they built it around him I like the fact of how they show Barry and Iris both dealing with traumas post Mirrorverse. Um, the uh, of course the whole thing. I mean the whole. I mean bringing in uh, really bringing in kind of that Mirrorverse kind of like the blip situation, which I will give DC credit for that. Thank you for taking something that you have right there and making it work. You had a whole bunch of people that were trapped in the Mirrorverse who are now out and are trying to reacclimate with life. So Mm -hmm. it's perfect to have a Mirrorverse survival group and then make Iris a part of it. That's great. I mean, I love that part. And, of course, Barry, uh, Barry just trying to still be the perfect husband with, you know, going all over the place. Again, adds to the fact that he's also dealing with trauma. And at the same time, um, I'm not going to lie, at the very end, I was was surprised by two things. Because I could have swore that that creature that looked like the Hulk, I was about to say Rampage. I was that close to saying that was Rampage. But I think they're not going to call... I don't think that person's going to be Rampage, personally. I think it's going to be somebody who was affected by the Strength Force. And um, 
And also with Caitlyn and Killer Frost actually splitting literally and figuratively into, into their own identities, I think that's going to lead for great storytelling. But overall, I like the episode. I couldn't be mad about it, but what do you think? So, um, I'm kind of torn. I was thinking that was Mongal, but now that you bring up Rampage, mm-hmm. it's entirely possible it's Rampage, because uh, like I said, I don't know who they're planning to use, because this season, uh, as I said last episode, this is going to be Force Quest, basically. Yeah, pretty much. So, she is probably the Avatar of Strength, mm-hmm. or the Strength Avatar for the Strength Force. If it is Rampage, that's cool, because, I mean, you know, we're if we're going to make that deep of a cut, let's make that deep of a cut. Pretty much. Uh, honestly, I kind of felt the episode was a little annoying on some things, but I liked that the characters progressed. Like you said, I did like that Ira, the uh, Iris having to be in denial for a moment. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but then you know, stepping into it was it was very good of her. But it was one of those. No, you dealt with something. Go go do this. It's like. I mean, it was, it was it was it was interesting to see it because we're so used to Iris always kind of being that emotional anchor in the show. But now, yes. it, but now it's like when you see her in this emotional state, and you see Barry trying to you know doing his best to kind of support the issue until he until he had to eventually face the problem that yes, you need to talk about what happened. So I like that. I said that that was always the the core parts of the Flash show that always made it work. That it made it different from Arrow and it made it different from from Legends and every and everybody else because it didn't really tie into the whole you know surrounding the heroes surrounding the hero story. It surrounded the characters that support the hero. That's actually what made it great. And of course, Abracadabra calling uh, Cisco <laughs> Mecha Mecha vibe. That was still funny. <laughs> He said, no, no, you didn't call me Mechavi. So <laughs> I'm wondering if the reason we have Killer Frost and uh, Kate, right? Yeah, 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 just... yeah, yeah, they both split. So I'm wondering if the reason they split is because Kate's going to be Wells this season because we don't have a Wells for season seven? Probably so. Because like because it's kind of funny where someone did I did read I did read a post where it said it was interesting that Harrison Wells was removed from the intro and I went back and watched I was like I didn't even notice that I'm so used to you know you get so used to seeing the intro and seeing yeah. the whole char- characters and I'm like they're exactly right he wasn't he wasn't in the intro so I it does set up for something I mean is is Kate gonna start taking that route of the you know, the Harrison Wells position. Um, I still sat there and said it's going to be interesting because you you made a timeless Wells that travels back and forth through time. So I'm not going to say we I'm not going to say we're going to be completely rid of him, but I do. But I do agree with you. I think it's good. I think he's going to. I think she's going to take that position on the team, though. I'm still wondering why we have uh, Chunk in the series because he seems redundant, or is he the other half of Wells that is used to spin off Cisco? I think he's gonna be the other half because I did like the banter that they had because it was I did like that and I'm like it's kind of like it's like the banter and Winter Soldier between Sam and Bucky it's it's almost like a brotherly complex a brotherly complex but instead of like hatred and just one upping each other they kind of had this we're trying to find our bond situation it's like and then mm-hmm. you see of course you see Cisco at the end like dude we're not gonna be friends if you keep moving my tail in Fortnite. So I think they're trying to build that off of as as him being the being the void that Wells was. So I, I that's why I kind of see that happening for the guy. But I think it, but I think it would fit though just because um it kind of adds to it. Like I said before, I'm not saying that does that mean the Flash because everything everything in the in the Cedo universe kind of ends at 8. Um Flash is on season 7. I'm not saying this is going to lead into a final season. But I wouldn't be surprised that it's going to be eventually a point to where Flash is going to end. And I think that's going to end in Season 8. But so far, that's what I said. I was a little worried about this season, Flash. But like you said, every season starts off strong. And this, to me, was a very strong episode. I could knock it. But, wait, but I mean, like you said, I mean, that could... I mean, I, the, more I, the more I think about it, I was like, yeah, that still could be Rampage, though. I mean, I looked at him like... I looked at her and saw her face, and I was like... That's Rampage. I mean, the simple fact of the matter is the simple fact of the matter of just inducing strength 
absorbing absorbing the lightning and still gaining strength afterwards. That made me think, yeah, that's Rampage. But I said it, it was either a Rampage or Mongal. We know Mongal is supposed to be showing up in Suicide Squad because I mean there are only like two yellow skinned female characters. Well, true. There's yeah, there's two. Well, Starfire is orange, so yeah. There's only two yellow skinned redheads. To my knowledge, in the DC, in DC universe. universe, right? So, I mean, if it's not Mongal, it would be Rampage. But yeah. I think, but I think they're kind of saving Mongal just because of Suicide Squad. So, you might know. I I changed my mind. You might be right. That actually might be Rampage that we saw. But again, I still love that episode. So, uh, and like I said, we're we're going from worst. If anybody wondering why we're going, because I like to go from worst to best of the week. And it always seems to be. I know. I, I know because I'm wearing a Captain America shirt and headband. We're gonna talk about the. We're gonna talk about the Winter Soldier, yeah. the Falcon Winter Soldier. But let me get through CW. Let's get through CW first, because Superman Lois uh, episode five, the best of Smallville. Again, I still think was a solid episode, uh, especially with the simple fact of the matter is that you know we see a little bit more of a story between the Kryptonite, between um, between what's going on in the mines. Uh, as I like to call it, they're creating they're creating fake uh, incomplete Superman just because uh, the missing son comes back and he's literally showing laser eyes, super strength, and flight, and also burning himself from the inside out. <laughs> um, so that definitely tells you instability. Um, uh, I do, and like I said before, there is a little bit of small bill because we still see the drama with Jordan, you know. Feeling, feeling more and more disassociated with Smallville, and and John is just in. I mean, John is just. Uh, I'm sorry, Jordan is moving forward. Jonathan is moving backwards. That's been, that's what I meant to say. Sorry about that. Because um, Jordan almost got a girlfriend. I said, how's that messed up that the first episode you caused a breakup, and then by episode five you're dating the guy that you apologized to because you kissed the girl who you're now about to be in a relationship with. I said that's kind of messed up if you think about it. I said that that's kind of messed up that you know now you're about to date the guy. It's like, well, are you still are you still sorry about that? And then, um, well, well, you know, maybe they will actually do that in a couple episodes down the road. Well, he'll go and ask. Boy, boy, it's like, is it cool if I do this? Yeah, I mean, that, I'm, would, be, yeah, nice. that is true. That that can always go there. And then, of course, you have Lex Luthor who who finally decided to approach Lois, of course, under a pseudo, and you know try to come off as a journalistic reporter that's working with her and and I do give it I'll give it credit for that it is still following his uh his story of course in their time he was he was married to a a Lois Lane of his earth and now I love the fact they're kind of flashing back to that and using that as part of this story which I did like I did like that so um, I do like that, but it's a little weird because we've already established that John Cryer is the Lex Luthor of this universe. Right. Even post-crisis, he's still Lex. Right. But everybody is the same character in the... We'll just say it's Earth-3 because that Superman, regardless of the black suit, he's probably Ultraman. Yeah. But, I mean, it yeah. is. It, you're right. It is. It is a little off. But that's only if they don't introduce if they don't introduce the Lex Luthor from this one. I think that's where Morgan Edge comes in. I think yeah. he kind of I think he kind of fills the Lex Luthor position right now because, like you said, even if they did introduce uh, Lex Luthor and it's kind of like okay, um, we got questions how this is going to work out. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But I think they're I think they're gonna kind of keep that out for this season because um, as great as these episodes well, the are, other, one, one thing I gotta say. Okay. Did he get his RV from Lone Star from Spaceballs? I just not thought about that. Because I... the wind does his <laughs> RV fly. Never mind that we saw that he, his super ship is now reduced to a Siri box. Yeah, that the RV. He's got panels that bring out high-tech anti-Kryptonian weaponry. You are. Does right. Winnebago fly? You are right. The more I thought about that, the more I think about that right now, I'm like, that was the RV. The RV design and everything looked like it was from Spaceballs. I don't think it was the same one. I'm just poking fun that it's got high tech uh, technology in an RV. But you know the funny part is, if you go back, if I'm if I'm remembering this correctly, if I go back and watch the episode, it's the same colors. If oh, I yeah. I want to oh, say if I'm right, it's the I same think colors. Are you know, formally that color though? I think <laughs> you can only get tan or brown or tan and brown and or white. <laughs> Pretty much. 
But uh, but so maybe his RV is Pete's RV from Goofy movie. Oh, good God! <laughs> not that, not that high tech one. Not the high tech one. But uh, but no, I did like the fact of that one. And then, like I said before, I think the whole the whole episode so far is with Superman and Lois. You see Clark having a lot of a lot of flashbacks. I'm not saying like mm-hmm. Arrow flashbacks. But you see him where he's trying to connect with his sons and he flashed back to, you know, him rebelling against his mom and leaving Smallville and then uh, going over to Metropolis. And I do like that. And at the same time, again. So. I'm sorry I'm interrupting you. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. So he is really young in that flashback. Yes. So I'm wondering if, and this is just my wild imagination, Okay. He does quite, He goes to the train station, and that's where the Legion picks him up. I can see that because he is literally Superboy at that point. Yeah, he is not Superman. He is not. I'm off to college age, Clark. Mm-hmm. He is still high school, maybe senior year, Clark. If that best, because that actor looked very young. Yeah, and he said, so, uh, "I wouldn't be I surprised." Mean, I mean, I'm just sitting there, and there, there's no way they're doing that. But to me, that's just like going to the train station, and there's Saturn Girl, Cosmic Boy, Lightning Glad. Come on, Clark, we're going to the 31st century. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if you really think about it. Like you said, like you pointed out, he was rather young in that in that flashback. So, again, if that's if that's a young 18-year-old, oh. Okay, well, guess we'll put that, we'll, we'll you know, Kryptonian physiology, I guess. But, um... If I shave, I look like I'm in my tw- early 20s. I still have people that work under me that still can't believe I'm almost 40, so... Still, that's like, it's like Kryptonian physiology? Because, like, I, I, that's the only thing I can chalk it up to, because you do have a point, because I'm like, dude, it doesn't even look like he's past 16, but okay. I'm not gonna argue with that. Um, but also with that, of course, we see, we see, uh, Superman fight I, I keep on wanting to say incomplete Superman, but it's it, clone. They keep fighting these incomplete clones, and it's interesting where you come up to the doctor. He says, "Protect the asset," and I'm like, "Okay." Um, so it's almost like it's almost as if this as if there's another Kryptonian ship right there, or they're finding a way to re to re do the Kryptonite. Because my theory is they're using the Kryptonite in some way to basically create incomplete superhero, incomplete incomplete metahumans. So, to me, it looks like the yellow kryptonite hooked into the MRI is making a artificial red sun generator. Give or take. And making uh, artificial kryptonians. That would make sense. Also, I want to know why Tag escaped from Xavier's Institute of Higher Learning, because that's an X-Man uniform. <laughs> I, you know what? I was that gonna, is literally I, an X-Man uniform. I was going to point that out, because I was like, Wait a second. So we so do we do we cross do we break fourth walls here? So I was like so I was I was watching it and I was like so we're all not gonna talk about the 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 outfit. We're not gonna talk about it. We we ain't gonna t- we all we all see X Men Training Academy when we see it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we all see it. But you know it's interesting where he breaks out and says what are, you know what did you do to me? As you're like what did he do? He did nothing to you. It's the fact of. Again, Smallville, Smallville being the epicenter of of burgeoning powers, and I think, yeah, like I said before, the whole in the whole episode ends with Tag just beating the crap out of John. I don't even think it's doing a lot of damage to John, really, because at this point we know the guy can take a shot. So I think. Well, that, if he's bleeding. That means his force field just isn't as strong as his dad's. But right. but I still think it's. I buzz it. But overall, the the episode, I dig it. It's a, it does lead up. I still think that, of course, we're going to come back and see uh, General Lane and his Project 7734. I still Which is say, a real thing. Say what? It is a real thing. Yeah, yeah. So I still think that's going to happen, and I think him and Lex are going to are going to wind up. He's like, because Lex, all he wants to do is beat Superman. Doesn't matter what, uh, doesn't matter what universe he's in, he wants to beat Superman badly. And of course, now the fact that he, you know, in this universe, he finds out that Lois, his Lois, well. Not his Lois Lane, but a Lois Lane is married to Superman, and that's just that's just gonna that's just gonna boil him over. You can even hear the 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 AI was like, "Are you sure at this point this is the best course of action?" Because <laughs> even the AI it's started crushing you. Lois, it is not that Kal El, right? I'm wait if he hadn't breaking in, I'm almost sure she, at some point she's gonna say, 
you will cause these events to happen in this world. Yes. And it's and I kept on saying the entire time, I'm like, you know that's pretty bad when the AI <laughs> the AI is questioning your methods at this point. A logic based artificial intelligence is going, Are you sure this is the right idea you want to do right now? <laughs> so but but like overall well, this week you wanted to Septicon brings an AI, Autobot AI with him. So it's like Oh god, you sure you imagine, you do this? Could you imagine Megatron having a prime uh, Optimus Prime AI? <laughs> Well, I mean, there was that one time he was a horrible monstrosity fused with Ratchet in the eighty, in the old eighties comic books. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> That's nightmare fuel. By the way, go watch Link Cara's uh, retrospective on Transformers. Okay, I was gonna, I was gonna think to myself, I was gonna say I could go one worse: Megatron with a Starscream AI. No, that's just treachery on his own. I mean, think about it. You could he, even an AI for me, he'd still say it. <laughs> You failed me. You failed me yet again, Starscream. <laughs> uh, I would have to, that. That would be comedy gold to me because Starscream would be like, "Well, what are you gonna do? I'm an AI." <laughs> and just and you see the you see, you see the console get blasted. He's like, "Now you gotta fix it. I'm over here now." <laughs> I mean, that would be much of a ship. <laughs> I mean, they had the ghost of Starscream. They saw that in tra in Transformers meets uh, Ghostbusters. They just said, "I love the Knicks and." The uh, trap, si the firehouse size trap, uh, trap star screen. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> That's still funny, but um, but with Superman Lois, like I said, I, I thought it was great. I again, I can't be mad. Every episode seems to be solid so far. Um, but what do you, but what do you think, Joe, about episode five? Oh, uh, it was good. Uh, they also dealt with some minor alcoholism issues in this one, which is nice. Oh, yeah, I miss. I forgot the, about that. The boys are there for pretty much everything. That they need to discuss a normal human family deals with. Yeah. Because we dealt with uh, what seems to be mild drug abuse, mm -hmm. uh, alcoholism, possibly some uh, parental abuse, or they did touch on uh, they did touch on suicide with the other family because of the girl. Yeah. They did touch on suicide, but lightly. Um, I don't know if it's like mental abuse from the family as opposed to physical abuse. Um. Which you can kind of see that with the, you know, there's a story with the, the father and the mother. Uh, yeah. Course, you, you kind of think there is a story right there, either with abuse or alcoholism, but I, I mean. Well, oh, definitely know. alcoholism, because yeah. even the daughter, when he was singing those, that song in uh, his, in Spanish, she was like, okay, no, you got to stop. Yeah, well, he, yeah, he was like, yeah, he was drunk as a skunk on that couch, but you're right. But that's the reason why I like it, though. I mean, it's just like. Oh, yeah. It's just like with uh, with Flash. Flash has its own storytelling, and Superman and Lois have their own storytelling. But both formulas are working right now, and I mm -hmm. can't be mad about either one of those. Um, I just wish that Black Lightning and uh, Batwoman would, uh, yeah, find that. So we all know when the show jumps the ship is when uh, Tyler, however you pronounce his last name, because I'm Electric Blue, right? That's yeah. the moment that he jumps the shark. Pretty much. <laughs> And then somehow he'll still make it work. Yeah, somehow. But or even better, Jordan becomes or Jonathan becomes electric blue. That would be funny as I'll get out. Um, but also, okay, let's move on. That would be that would be funny. At the same time, you wouldn't be far off. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, but like I said, uh, getting to the Falcon and the Winter Falcon and Winter Soldier because a lot of people saw the first episode. <laughs> Especially at the end, and we all sat there and said, "Really, U.S. agent? This is what we're doing?" This like what are you, you talking about that like man, that's like right out the book, U.S. agent. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like the I like the guy who's who's playing John Walker. I like that because you oh, see, yeah. no, you saw the re you saw the statement he put out, right? Yeah, I love that you guys hate my character. Mm -hmm. Just realize I'm not that character. Yeah, because you know some people are gonna to go too far if they see him out in public. You, you're Ted. You killed Captain America. Wait, 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 wait. That, that's a show. That's a show. Thank you for watching. But that's a show. <laughs> Let's leave it at the show. I mean, you would think, um, but you. There are some fans that are just cuckoo. But um, but no, I. I, I those are great. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved it. I love the whole thing. Because I remember, well, I had to go back. And, I actually had to go back and go reread those because the John Walker I remember was he was a hard right person, but when it came when it came down to it, he always did the right thing. 
He never, yeah. he never, he never did go dark side. Even though some no, of the, he did a couple times. Eh, what three, three times? Oh, take. Give or take three times. But majority wise, if we're going majority wise, he did the right. I mean, he was kind of like a Deadpool. You know, twenty percent Deadpool, eighty percent good. <laughs> Yeah, we, we mean New Mutants Deadpool, not current Deadpool. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I did like his, you know, they're trying to do a little background on him and try to show him, you know, being selected. Uh, I did like the fact that they, you know, they kind of sit there and said, look, they didn't give me the serum. They didn't give me the formula. I'm as, I, I'm just a little, I mean, I'm a little faster. I'm a little stronger, but I'm not Captain America. And I did like the approach they went with that. And I did like the fact of them and mentioning, I mean, having Battlestar. When I heard the guy's name, I was like, Battlestar. I was like, did they just, because he says, he, I don't even a lot more than Hoskins. He says, oh, they call me Battlestar. And you just see Bucky go, check. <laughs> Bucky was like, get me off the star. Okay, for those of you that don't know who Battlestar is, he is literally the fifth version of Bucky Barnes. Yep. There is Bucky Barnes, there's Rick Jones, there's uh, Sam Wilson, Yep. there's one other person who eludes me, and then there's Battlestar. Which Battlestar wasn't a bad character, but I was like Bucky when he just went, okay, just pull over. I'm, I'm done. He's like, I'm done. Pull over. I'm out. He is like... And don't get me wrong, I think that's going to be a good dynamic with having Battlestar cool. and U.S. Agent there. And, of course, you see it through the episode. Of course, let's be honest. Anytime you have Sam Wilson and Bucky in a scene, it's comedy. Number one, it's comedy gold. They're always going to be at each other's throats. I have never been disappointed by that. And, of course, now you kind of see it to the point to where, okay, you kind of see where they're going to have to work together, especially now. They have a common goal on multiple fronts at this point. Yeah. Now they're you know, they going to be definitely working together. And, of course, you see John, you see John Walker's like, hey, guys, come come work for me. And you have they both look at him like, you're not, you're not, you're not Cap. <laughs> you just see Bucky. Bucky's still mad at Sam for giving up the shield. Sam still believes that he shouldn't have the shield, but still mad at the people for not leaving in the museum, but giving it to John Walker. So you have that dynamic. And another thing, another thing which I liked was uh, two things, actually. Um, one, they gave a little bit more in-depth to the Flag Smashers as far as them being enhanced. So I did like the fact they even almost made them, they almost made them really likable. I'll, I'll, I'll be mm -hmm. honest with you. I'll be honest with you, watching this episode, I wasn't, I mean, granted, seeing the first Flag Smasher just stomp the crap out of that one dude, okay, okay, but you see, in this episode, it's like, it's almost like they're trying to humanize them. It's like, there's a reason they're doing all of this, and they're being... That's yeah, Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's, 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 I, it's, it is basically that, but again, it's almost like you see a human side of it, from our view, and then, okay. um, I did like the Isaiah Bradley reference. I did like that. Oh. We got both of them. We yeah. got uh, Black Cap and we got Patriot. Yeah. So they did. So they did mention that, and I'd explain to somebody. It's like Isaiah Bradley. He says that is the. It, it's not a. It he was is uh, the original Captain America out of a whole platoon of Captain America. Yeah, and it was like I was trying to explain to somebody. That's literally where Cap. I said, if you, I said, if you've never really read about it, no, I've had a lot of people who just now became comic book fans, especially after this, after the Marvel Infinity Saga run, so uh, movie run, I should say. I always tell people go back because Isaiah Bradley was actually a reference to where Captain America was dealing with racism because. He was finding out about all the horrible experiments that were going on before it even got to him. So it's like, you, you kind of see where Sam and Bucky, because Bucky had an idea about him. He's like, Sam's like, why was this never sold? And Bucky sat there and said, the man has been through too much. I didn't want to bring him back out in this again. And you can see where old boy still had the strength because he threw that pack or whatever that thing was. <laughs> I thought it was an Altoids tin, honestly. I was like, I thought it was too. I was like, I was like, that thing was that wide. He just flung it and it just stuck into the wall. And he's like, I don't want to go through this again. And I was thinking to myself, I love the realism right there. And mm -hmm. I like the fact, of course, Sam and Bucky, of course, being stopped by the cops. And but you know, Sam's like, oh man, Bucky's like, be cool. And you know, of course, Bucky has a warrant out on him because he missed therapy. 
No, no. But the thing that got to me is the cop goes like, "I didn't recognize you without the goggles." Right. That it's was like, the, that was the thing that ticked Sam off. How do you not recognize somebody just because they don't have goggles on? Right. And you just see the person. It's bad when the other person goes or whispers in. Um, you do know who that is, right? It's like you was like. His eyes got, it's like, when he recognized his eyes got wide, it was like, oh, sh- uh, hey, 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 man, um, that's- and This crazy. is after the second cop car comes for no reason. Right. So, it's like, I do like the fact of realism there, because it kind of, it, it gave a, how can I put this? It gave a defender's feel a little bit, that, yeah, they're, yeah, they have abilities, but they're still human as far as the world sees them. So, I like that fact of that. At the same time, I did like at the very end where he sat there as like, I'm gonna have to go see him. Who? The guy who the guy who I have more information about this than anybody else. I he says, Do you really want to go see him? And I'm like, Oh, are we, are we going to the purple helmet? Are we going to the purple helmet? And of course, you go to Baron you go to Baron Zemo, who of course they show the chess piece, they show him, you know, looking somber. So we know that in the next episode they are gonna go to Baron Zemo to basically get information, uh, as far as what about his time in Hydra. So overall, I like the episode. The episode itself oh, yeah. was, the episode was plenty of action, especially especially old girl, especially when Sam said that that little girl kicked your ass. <laughs> And Bucky, I just just, it. Hey, Bucky can't tell. I was like, I'm gonna break Red, Red Wings if you don't get it out of my face. <laughs> that was. That, I mean, that's. I think that's gonna make the show. I mean, when I was telling when I was telling everybody else, it's like they were asking me, "Is Falcon Winter Soldier good?" I said, "I have yet to run into a Marvel series that's been that has been televised that I didn't like." And I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this to boast, but it, I. The one thing Marvel has been good about when it comes to their MCU, whether it's movies or television, is the fact that not only do they intertwine everything, but it flows. I mean, you can't. I mean, we can't think of a bad. Okay, I, I use it. I use WandaVision as an example. I said, could you name really a bad episode in WandaVision that didn't lead to ultimately what you found out at the end? Well, I mean, everybody did because no, we never saw Mephisto for anybody. Right. I mean that but then again that's our but let's be honest. That was our imaginations running wild. Even mine. I sat there and said it. I said I said, I'll you know, we should see Nightmare, we should see Mephisto, we should see a scroll somewhere. Well we did see a scroll somewhere at least. I mean, possibly yes, but but I'll be honest, our imaginations went wild because again, that's the story. The story took us on a ride. So I use Falcon and Winter Soldier the same way. I think it's still taking us on a ride to where it's going to lead to something else, possibly into another movie in the MCU, um, because they never said if the Falcon and Winter Soldier is going to be a one se- one season run. Um, they never really went into that, but I'm thinking it will be just because um, it may lead to another MCU movie down the line. But I mean, but what I mean, but I'm sorry, but what did you think about episode two? Because I I could go back and watch that again. That was just it was really good. No, the action's good, the comedy good, the therapy session alone was worth the worth the wait. <laughs> oh yeah. Just the interlocking uh, soul g- the soul, soul gazing. gazing. <laughs> oh, the soul gazing was funny. I I gotta be honest, the soul gazing the soul gazing law lo- I, I, he's like, What are y'all doing? He says, Are y'all having a staring contest right now? <laughs> it's had six blink. And it was it was funny, like to the point to where it's like even the therapist was like, "Oh, Sam, we need you in here too." Ah, uh, I'm good. She says that's not that's not a request. It's like you're now. It's like I think the therapy sessions are gonna be a part of the series, but it makes it great. But I think that. But like I said, overall, I I just wasn't disappointed. I thought the. I thought I the whole thing was funny. Bradley, uh, I liked the fact that we also got to very briefly meet Patriot. Yeah. Now, whether or not he's going to have his powers or not, I don't know. But we at least get to see a the potential actor for Pedro. We already know we're recasting Stature. But uh, we at least get that feel that the young Avengers are out there already. We yeah. are starting to meet them via cameos. Now, granted, we did not meet... Uh, we did not get... I want to say his name is Isaac because he's named somewhat after his grandfather. Um... Maybe. I I'll, I'll agree with that. I think so. Uh, we meet him very briefly. It could just be like a great nephew or something. Give or take. But more than likely he is he is paid. more than likely that is supposed to be Patriot. 
well, just for reference sake, because he's living with Grandpa. Yeah. I mean, I can see uh, that. Baron Zemo coming up next is fine. Uh, the One World thing, that, that was fine. It was just weird that they seem indestructible, but a bullet can take them down, but that's just me. Yeah, that, that part. I think I, either, either they have to explain it. I think that if they're, if they're using different ammo, I think it'll be explained, but yeah, you got a point about that. Oh, we got, I, oh, we got comments. I'm so sorry I missed it. Uh, oh, well, right hook to his left nasal cavity. <laughs> Tar Tariq in power. Okay, I know who that is. That's Vaughn. Um, because Vaughn must he must he must just saw the episode. Uh, thanks, Vaughn, man, for watching, man. Really appreciate it. But I'm sorry. Go go ahead, Joe. Um, I think any of these Feige things wrap around really well. Um, so far only the Daredevil seems to still want to tie into the Grand <coughs> Marvel universe. Yeah. Everything else not so much. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. actually learned their lesson of don't tie into the Marvel Universe, because mm. yeah, that first season was rough because they were trying to tie themselves too closely to the movie, rather than that's fair. the thing the movies are happening, mm -hmm. or react to it as it comes, rather than, well, we got to wait for a couple months, because we got to have this episode intrinsically tie into that episode. Okay, that's fair. Rather than, rather than just... Oh, uh, season happens, so how are we dealing with this Captain America thing? Yeah. Because that... we can't, but I'll put some people on it. <laughs> yeah. So you're right. That is fair. So, I mean, I can see that point. But uh, but another but another, uh, but another uh, show we are going to talk about, too, that actually just came out. Well, I want to say they released it. I mean, I just watched the episodes today. They may have came out. Sometime. They came out yesterday. They came out like a day early. Okay, okay, because I was wondering about that. The show we're actually talking about, guys, is Invincible. Amazon's Invincible. It's actually a graphic novel by Robert Kirkman. If you don't know who that is, if you've seen The Walking Dead or so many adaptations of it now, Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, I think there's another Fear one now. The Walking Dead. Shopping with the Walking Dead. Yeah, there's the Not scary, Flavor Shop, Town of the Walking Dead. Shopping with the Walking Dead. I haven't, I haven't, I actually haven't paid attention to the Walking Dead since the graphic novel ended. But um, I just the show. Uh, I can go. I know that's a whole other conversation that the show does need to end um, because it. Unless it's Beyonce being a dead horse right now, but that's, that's Robert. The point of that show, though. <laughs> Damn, but um. But uh, Robert Kirkman is actually, uh, his graphic novel is called Invincible, and it's actually an adaptation uh, on Amazon Prime if you are able to watch it. Um, first and foremost, let us both, let us both, let me and Bo Joe show, uh, say right now, Invincible is not for kids. Ooh. Well, actually, some of the later episodes can be, but uh, that first episode, no. Yeah. Oh, no, shoot. No, that, no. Shoot, episode three. <laughs> the third episode was like, because um, I got to point that out, guys, because um, I know a lot of people go, oh, Invincible, it's a superhero show. Kids will love it. No. Trust me. This is not for children. If anything, this is like superhero Archer style. So if you've seen Archer on FX, it's a little bit more extreme than that. Just to give you guys some, some clarity, because um, I had to prevent somebody from letting their child watch Invincible because they were about to ask a whole bunch of questions they're not ready for the answers to. Um, but anyway, for all of us who are adults and can enjoy it, um, the three, the first three episodes did release. I think they're going to be releasing an episode, um, I want to say every Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they're going to be releasing a show every Friday. Uh, but they did release the first three episodes, um, as Joe said, uh, Thursday. And I'm going to be honest, to watch the three episodes, I'm hooked. Now, I've never read the graphic novel to uh, Invincible. I actually had to go on Amazon and go find it um, because I've never read the graphic novel. But speaking from experience, to give you guys a synopsis real quick before I you know, let Joe, because I'm pretty sure Joe's probably... Joe, have you read the novel? Or no, surprisingly, um, I did post in a statement. Uh, Invincible was just always... It was on my radar, but just I never got around to it. Okay. But uh, I will say from base, before we go into this, I am interested because I am a big lover of legacy stories uh -huh. and um, also Slice of Life, which is also what this is. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, give you guys an idea. Um, so, Invincible is basically about this teenager who is the son of a superhero called Omni-Man. Now, Omni-Man is basically Superman in this universe. He's 
completely overpowered. Um, kind of, kind of is a war, kind of is a loner, even though there are other superheroes out there called Guardians of the Globe. Yes, I know it's a little close to the nose, but um, it's a team of superheroes that pretty much go out and try to save the world. Now, the, his son, who we're focusing on the story, is a little bit of a late bloomer because the father, Omni Man, thinks that the son is supposed to have his powers since. Uh, the father is actually from a is actually a being from another planet. I know, I know. Just understand. I mean, it's Robert Kirkman, so just give you guys some ideas. So, uh, with that being said, in the first episode, uh, the young man actually does get his powers, and you see his father training him. And since his father is training him, um, we see him kind of expanding and trying to find his way as far as his flying. He really hasn't got the landing down yet. <laughs> the landing is a little bit whoo. Um, the landing's a little bit rough. <laughs> Say what? So you just gotta slide into it. Yeah, and um, of course he's still dealing with high school mess. I still love the fact of what he did to the bully when he realized he couldn't be hurt. <laughs> the, when he's telling he the bully to hit him again and again and again, and the bully is literally just destroying his hand. <laughs> and. Um, but uh, pretty much, uh, aside from that, of course, he's coming into his own as a superhero and decides to call himself Invincible, which everybody is kind of making fun of because it's like, that's op that's optimistic. <laughs> so he's coming into his own. But the trippy part about it is, is a story around his dad. Because not to give too much away, there is a twist in the story. Uh, I want to say episode... Uh, well, it's one. Is it still in one? It's still yeah, end, of, it's end one. of one, beginning of two? No, it's just the end of one. They're kind of dealing with everything in two. Okay, because I was, I was going to say beginning of two. Okay, so again, I don't want to spoil this for everybody because, again, this is fairly new. Um, but I will say this. Watch it all the way through. They do like they do do like Marvel. There is stuff just because you see credits does not mean jump to the next episode. You will actually see stuff uh, mid credit. And then they have another scene, and then you have the credit. So if you're a Marvel fan for Invincible, you already know. Watch it all the way through. That's just the way it is. Um, but not to tell, but not tell too much of it. Yes, there is an event that happens at the end of episode one that leads into episode two, and kind of carries a story from there. That there's a certain question about a certain character um, that you're gonna have in the back of your head. But we're not gonna go too far into it. Um, next week we will because by then that's it's been a week. You yeah. should have a good idea of the story by then. But um, but yeah, but overall, and I'm, I'm gonna let Joe take it from there. I liked it, but Joe, uh, just from a spoiler-free side of things, what did you think of Invincible so far? Oh, no, I really liked it. Uh, I, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, as I said, I enjoy Slice of Life stuff. I enjoy the legacy stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, JSA is my favorite DC team because they are nothing but legacy characters uh, teaching the next generation. That's what this story is. Right. Now, the motives of the teaching are suspect, but we'll leave that where it is now. <laughs> um, oh, we got Oh, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be an interesting conversation next week. <laughs> why are we even bothering with Fight Force? We have te uh, Team Team. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe the Fight Force even showed up for that those tryouts. What were they doing? <gasps> Mark um, Girl is my favorite. That, you know, like a lot of superpowers, some of them are even curses, like Monster Girl, maybe. Yeah. Where she's actually pretty, she has a pretty rough. Um, just because I've read so many books, I can kind of see where certain elements are going, and I've honestly never read this book. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I see, okay, well, that's probably where that's going. Those two are going to get together, and that dude's going to be a villain down there. Yeah, I, I know exactly who you're talking about. I, I kind of have an idea who you're, who you're who you're pointing this as the villain because oh, there I, are a couple of people. I'm just gonna well, you're gonna be a villain and you're gonna be a villain, but you're gonna be a overly gonna be a, villain. And you're gonna, gonna be, be anti-hero. I see um, one. I see one being more anti-hero than villain. No, he's gonna be overly dramatic villain. I guarantee. <laughs> Fair enough. He's gonna be like that one dude, dude in episode three, Doctor uh, Doc Quaker. Doc Seismic. Oh man, not. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, oh yeah, that no, was that still was, funny. Like, that that guy was funny. Surprisingly well informed, it's like major in women, uh, major in seismology and uh, minor in African uh, dance. Minor in 
social activities, women's studies, and da 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 da. It's like oh, oh I just love the fact that is so gender specific. I made this. <laughs> oh, oh, that was. I'm sorry. I know, guys. For a lot of y'all watches, you're going what? Trust me. Watch if you're an adult. If you're an adult, watch all three episodes. You'll understand exactly what we're talking about right now. But that's it. I will only... say the cast is wonderful. J.K. Simmons does a great Omni Man. Yeah. Sandro is fantastic as the mom. Uh, Stephen Yoon is the is the, is the, is the, is the son. Mark. Yeah. Uh, I want to say Clancy Brown is doing double duty in this episode. I think he's both the Mauler twins and the Demon Detective. Yes. He is. I checked. I, I know. The reason okay. why I know that is um, I checked the credits. He is. Okay, so he is doing double duty. Yeah. So yeah, he's definitely doing both. But um, but yeah, it's like for y'all, like I said, guys, for Invincible, um, to be honest with you guys, like I said, it is an adult, it is an adult cartoon. Think of it like the boys, which I can't wait for season three. But again, the boys isn't for children. Invincible's not for children, whether in television or graphic form. I'm just throwing it out there. Um but anyway, that's really all the shows that we had that we kind of had this week. I know, Joe, that you had some uh, comic book news that you wanted to share. Yeah, we have comic book news and the recommendations. Mm -hmm. So, comic book news. Diamond's about to die, guys. <laughs> that's Diamond Distributor, they are, they are about to die. That's still, that is still crazy that that uh, distributor doesn't last that long. We know DC has already left Diamond Distribution. Marvel is now working with Penguin Random House Audio. Yep. Or Penguin Random House, excuse me. Their audio is their, just their audio. Um, they will be uh, they are doing an exclusive multi-year world grant for both comics and graphic novels, meaning they are taking over the direct market distribution as of October. Uh, they did, however, take a small pot shot at DC, uh, in their announcement, saying that they will still be releasing their comic books on Wednesdays. Dang. <laughs> I, got letters, I don't know. Everybody's going to get their comic book on Wednesdays anyways. So I, I think they're trying to go back to that one time DC made a joke about Wednesday about Wednesday deliveries. I can't remember how it goes. I guess. I, I, I if, it's, if it's that joke, I'm like, it's a little outdated, but okay, you tried. But, but uh, yeah, that's going to uh, lead to a bunch of stuff. Uh, hopefully this means that um, since uh, they are going to dis different distributor, that they will have less money, meaning they can print more stuff or reprint more stuff easily. I'm not quite sure of the logistics of that, but I would hope that would mean they can get more stuff in reprint quicker and easier. Well, we saw what happened with Scarlet Witch. Everything, oh, yeah. everything, everything Scarlet Witch pretty much got put on back order, so that makes sense. Oh, just wait for Captain America to be sold out left and right. Oh yeah, especially with the, especially with that and it's uh, the the U.S. agent stories and Iron uh, and uh, uh, crap. Isaiah gonna, Bradley. Yeah, Isaiah Bradley and what the other five variations of the what? I, I they're not really variations. The what if stories, I guess you can call them. Yeah. So the yeah the what if story so I I expect those to be sold out too. Well, that and I also would think the Thunderbolts are going to start selling out soon because that's Baron Zemo's big team. Yep, but I think that's good. Well, uh, like Masters of Evil, but you know Masters of Evil doesn't have their own book. But that would make sense because, like I said, you know them actually go going to smaller prints. No, I well then again it might be Marvel's master planning. I'm not calling Kevin Fan a genius, but I'm just saying. It seems that every show that he does, the comic books behind those shows seem to the sales kick up. So mm -hmm. I mean, it, it wouldn't be beyond the point of it wouldn't be on the point of rationality that a lot of Captain America's uh, line, as far as his line variations, one-offs, spin-offs, things of that nature, those will probably be sold out very soon. So yeah, it makes sense. Um, Our second bit of news: we have a casting. In Black Adam, Pierce Brosnan is going to be Dr. Fate, specifically the Kent Nelson version of Dr. Fate. That is still, I, I still, I saw that, I'm like, James Bond is Dr. Fate. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I think because you, you think, you think Kent with the helmet, and like, and like you said, we were talking about offline, uh, of course he's going to have the helmet on the majority of the time. 
I can't see him without the helmet too many t- without the helmet too many times to actually have a role. And especially with him being in the Black Adam movie, we still don't know. We still don't know the direction of where it's going. As far as we do know that Black Adam either is trying to claim uh, Kandahar or he's rebelling against it. Um, we just know that apparently it's uh, Hawkeye. We know it's uh, Hawkeye, Doctor Fate, and two other people. I can't think of their names right now. To save my life. That are going to be actually casted in there as well. Oh, uh, Cyclone, Adam Smasher, Hawkman, and Dr. Fate. Yeah, so uh, that's what I was missing. Cyclone, Adam Smasher. So we know that somewhere along the lines, the, these all are going to intersect somewhere. But uh, but I, like I said, I'm not against the cast. I'm not against no. it. I think Pierce, I think Pierce Broston uh, will do pretty good as Dr. Fate. Now, it depends on how they're going to bring him up, but... I uh, it's going to be really funny that he's going to be calling Aldris Hodge dad. That is still going to be uh, funny. Because uh, a version of Hawkman is Kent Nelson's father. <laughs> so, you know, I mean. It might have, they might do a, they might do a weird reference like, you, D, it's like, you look familiar. There's something familiar no, about no, you. No, they're fully aware of everything. It's just one of those, Aldris Hodge is a lot younger than Pierce Brosnan. Right, 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 right. right. But I think, but I think that I think that they, if like most things, they might do a nod to it. I, I won't yeah, say that I full. Think just write out reference. It goes like, "This is my father in a former life." <laughs> if they do that, <laughs> I mean, I, will just be like, "I have a resurrection issue." <laughs> <laughs> you know they're gonna make some joke about that. You you know I that's coming. So. But I hope so because it's really it sometimes. It really is pivotal that their son that their son and father, and sometimes it's an afterthought. Yeah. Um, I, I can see that, but I'm not against that though. But I did want to talk. I did want to keep promoting Radiant Black. Uh, I have, I've read the first month issue. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't got the two yet. I'm waiting on the other two. And Joe, I have to give Joe credit for this because Joe put me on Radiant Black um, because he gave a synopsis that I that I would you know if you don't mind, sir, giving that a synopsis again because uh, if you're a fan of Power Rangers, you get, move, head, move back home. <laughs> Go out with your drinking buddy. Find a little emblem floating in the air. Become a superhero. With gravity powers. <laughs> I mean that. I mean the. I mean the story alone will grab you. I know it did for me when I read it. Um, and like I said before, it is one of those ones I recommend as far as comic book reading goes. Um, Joe, do we have any other comic book news as well? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, no, no other comic book news. Uh, I do have my recommendations. So, Radiant Black Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, picks right up off Radiant Black 1, except this time Black finds red, meaning this does confirm there are other radiant colors out there. Uh, Red is not a good guy. I'll leave it at that. Black has questions. Red just doesn't have time for that. Dang. (laughs) Um, My second recommendation is actually something that will be coming down the road. It is also by Kyle Higgins. It's a fully kickstarted trade called Inferno Girl Red. It may even be taking place in the same universe as Radiant Black. Okay. Uh, this is a about a girl who is where is, she, where is the synopsis? Uh, this is a according to the article, it is a blend of tokusatsu and teen superhero drama. So think Smallville meets the Power Rangers. Okay. Uh, we're a, with a healthy dose of British boarding school. So this is taking place somewhere in Britain. Uh, it follows Cassie Acosta, who is a teenage girl genius, because everyone, every girl in comics right now, if you're a teenage girl, you are a part of Mensa. <laughs> nice. Uh, they fi- she finds her native city, uh, Apex City, stolen by a demonic cult. She is given a... A magical bracelet that transforms into her into the red girl, uh, Inferno girl. However, her powers are constantly in flux because Cassia is a very scientifically driven, logic thinking girl, and the powers work off her belief Ooh. and faith in the supernatural. <laughs> oh, so, uh, so science, believe- <laughs> so science believe versus supernatural, and that's the reason why her powers will be in flux. Dang. So if you see like a lot of the imagery, like her part of her helmet's missing and the f- energy is flowing out, another thing shows part of uh, her costume is uh, bre- bleeding apart. 
uh, is just constantly almost in flux because, like I said, it's a belief-based power system. Right. Or even, like, her powers would just stop working. She's just a girl in a suit. Yeah. So it's gonna be it's inter- gonna be interesting. So who is Kyle Higgins is writing it along with Matt Groom. Okay. Uh, art and uh, third co creator is Eric De Urso. Uh, letter is Becca Carey. Colorist is Igor Monti. Uh, Kyle Higgins is the other co creator and editor of the book. See that yeah. that was the one. Yeah, see that was the one. Yeah, I I that actually that's the one I have added to my list. You told me about, so I have to I have to get on that one too. Yeah, um, so this is a full graphic novel, and it's already been kickstarted. We're just waiting for it to come out. Cool, just like I'm waiting for the next episode of the next uh, issue of Berserker, Berserk, and I'm like, I hope this is better than the first one. But anyway, um, well, Berserker already did what he needed to do. So the third comic book recommendation, because we do I do have a third one. It is not out yet. I think it drops next week. And that is the new uh, arc of Flash. Uh, Flash is now back in the hands of Wally. Interesting. Uh, Wally wants to quit because he's been trapped in the Speed Force for almost a decade, inadvertently by his uncle, for replacing with a less interesting version of himself. (laughs) Other Wally is just boring. Uh okay. I didn't like Wall. I didn't like other Wally. Like I did not like the overly antagonistic. The world. I hate the world. The world's against me, Wally. So a superior. He got, so- better, he got better later on when other writers got him, but initial initial writers just like I just couldn't. I couldn't take the kid. So it was superior Wally for a bit for a while. <laughs> yes, it was for me. It was superior Wally for a while, and like mm-hmm. I said. Other writers handled him better, mm-hmm. but his initial uh, introduction, it's just like, was why are you here? It was trash. Good yeah. to know. But I'll have to I keep mean, that in mind. They said, what was that run? What was that called again? Arthur, they said, what's called again? What? The the run for the count for the new one. For the new one. That's about oh, well, the new one, is just, it's just Flash. It's just Flash 778. Okay. Now, the whole premise with this is... While he's trying to retire so he can spend time with his wife and kids. But then for whatever reason, Wally starts to quantum leap. And he's quantum leaping into bodies of speedsters through time. Oh, God. So, he's and so Everybody he knows. So he quantum leaps into Jay. He'll quantum leap into Bart. He'll quantum leap into Max Mercury. I'm sure he's going to get a really awkward issue where he becomes Jesse Quick. <laughs> They're probably going to get an even awkward issue where he becomes Barry, and then uh, you know, more than likely, just for the comedy of it, he'll be on a date with Iris. It's like, oh, this is so weird. That that's going to be beyond. That's going to be beyond weird. That's going to be like, dude, that that's 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 some body snatcher stuff where it's going. They're going. He's going to have everybody in the Speed Force looking at him a little bit different. Um, we already know the one of the first issue he like is in the dinosaur times, and he's being chased. By a raptor that also has speed force. <laughs> the Jurassic Park we never asked for. <laughs> the Jurassic Park we never asked for. Oh, Molly's back. A raptor with super speed. Oh, yeah, Molly's back. <laughs> um, we also are starting to see more '90s superheroes coming back because uh, Josh Williamson just announced in his upcoming uh, Damian Wayne Robin run, he's mm-hmm. bringing back Connor Hawk. Remember, the universe got rebooted again. Everything happened. I, and the I, Robin Hood is a uh, la- uh, Enter the Dragon style martial arts tournament. <laughs> okay. Don't forget it. I mean, as much as people don't like Damien, Damien is the son of Batman. He, he is the son of Batman. The son of Apollo Ghoul and the grandson of the Demon's Head. True. So it's not it's like it. he's going into a martial arts tournament like. I know martial arts. No, he's going as like I know martial arts. Yeah, it's a kuma. It's, I can see it as a kumite setup. I can see. Yeah, I no, can see it, that. It's probably, he even said this is blood sport, but with every DC martial artist, be they hero or villain. Interesting. Well, and be- he's trying because the he. I, what did he say? It's like, oh, you're the son of Batman. Man, you're awesome. So your dad did this to me. <laughs> 
That's gonna be a messed up situation. So yeah, Batman. So Batman basically, Batman basically ruined my life. But he's your dad, and I'm not gonna try to hold that against you. Yeah. Ye, good luck with that. But yeah. uh, but that's but I but thank you for those recommendations, Joe. Really appreciate that. Um, the only thing I gotta say, anime wise, uh, we are gonna unfortunately say goodbye very soon to a couple of animes. Black Clover. Uh, Black Clover will be uh, ending its manga its current run because the manga actually did stop. So uh, Black I got a say what? Could, I got a question. Did it become Magical Hokage? No. Okay, there's no point to the series. And good night, people. <laughs> well, it, it, it's a twist. I can't say it because I've read. I mean, I've read the manga to the end, so I'm trying not. Does this to... one become Magical Hokage? I can't say. Okay, so yes. <laughs> I cannot. I, it is. I'll put it this way: It is such a twist that all I can say to answer your question would be yes, no, no, yes. So- the magical soccer became magical Hukage. No. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 like I said, I it, it, I will say this for the Black Clover manga: It is such a twist in the last one that I didn't even see it coming. No. Okay, that's good. so. I, I'll I'll put it that way. At it. Now. I would hope the same. I know for a lot of people going, that makes no sense. I know because I don't want to spoil it for you if you watch Black Clover. Um, with its two episodes left, the next episode, which we're, the next episode, really won't be until next Tuesday. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen will have its season finale. For all those that don't know what that is, Jujutsu Kaisen is a new manga that just came out, um, which is available currently right now on Crunchyroll and Fun Animation. Um, they're going to be reaching their the reason they're going to be reaching their end of their season arc, but. Again, if you read manga, they're way, 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 oh, yeah. way ahead. And um, which only leads up to My Hero Academia because that's going to start again back in April. Um, but like I said, with My Hero Academia, we might be looking at the end of that one because uh, the latest manga, which is actually the, which is actually the end story, just came out today, um, which means I won't get it until Tuesday uh, from Shonen Jump. So... Uh, be prepared to say goodbye to My Hero Academia unless they decide to do a Shippuden kind of thing to it. I highly doubt it. Um, I think he turned himself into a corner because they made the characters too overpowered and they don't have sufficient villains. Right. I mean, well, uh, there's a certain arc that comes up that kind of fills that that kind of fills that void. I just can't say it. Um, there's a certain arc that does come up that uh, because of a certain individual, he does take care of the villain problem. That's about the best way I can put that. Um, but yes, but those will be ending. Um, well, I was, I'm sorry. Let me correct that. One will be ending. One will be going on a season finale, and of course, one will be ending. It's one will be into the final run of its publication. So uh, there's a lot of anime. Like I said before, that's that's anime. That's I'm not gonna say really popular, but that's the ones that are ending. There's still Fire Force out there if you haven't seen it. There's still uh, the God of High School if you haven't seen that on Crunchyroll. Uh, the one time I got recreated slime is also very good. The title mm-hmm. threw me. The title threw me off. I'll be honest. The title for that threw me off until I actually sat down and watched it. Now I'm watching it religiously. Uh, I'm trying to think of all of them off the top of my head. Uh, I even went back and actually found Jaime no Ipo, which was basically the boxing anime about that one guy. Who watches that other than me and Jared? Say what? Someone watches that other than me and Jared. Finally. Oh, I love it. It's like, it's been a while. It's like, I haven't, I, I have to find it on Crunchyroll when I was looking for new anime to watch. I was like, oh, they do not have this. And I'm like, yes, they do. <laughs> and I, and like, I haven't seen it since I was 16 years old. And I'm like, oh, do they still have this? This is great. And, um. They just put it back on there with the new, with the new sub translations. They did, but I, I, I still watch subtitles. I, I'm used to I don't know, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm used to subtitles. I mean, my buddy Thomas was here. He'd have a fit about that. But, uh, but, uh, but yes, but for all those, yes. Uh, and a lot of people are going, well, you have, well, there's so many animes out there. Yes, there is, but I'm only trying to point out the ones because my mission um, on Get Bit when it comes to animes is to literally show everybody besides the popular ones because there are a lot of ones that came out before Naruto, before um, even One Piece um, that were really great. And need to get that same attention. Trust me. Like I said, there's a lot of times, even uh, Ryoshi Kenshi, even though if you can yeah, if you can stick with that, if you can stick with that, it's actually good too. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sit down, let me tell you the tale of a boy named Sam. 
<laughs> you ain't wrong though. Uh, but yeah, well, but... another good one. Have you ever heard the Ballad of Lin Min May? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, I know exactly. See, that's why I said, man, I'm about to. I was thinking about saying, I, I don't know if I some of those animes. I gotta think back. Even Megalobox, Megalobox is a re, is a fairly recent one, although technically it was 2000. It's a of the old boxing anime of Shido no Jet. Yeah, yeah, because that was the, the first one was what 99, 2000, if I'm right, the original, or am I thinking way farther? Uh, I think 1970s. Oh, the oh, the first one. Okay, yeah, because I'm thinking. Yeah, you know, Joe Joe one. Okay, I'm thinking two because two was ninety nine two thousand. The no. first. One, yes, because oh. if I'm right, the first one was seventies. The next one should have been ninety nine two thousand. Then we have the and then we have that one. If I'm remembering right, or if I'm getting my or if I'm getting my anime screwed up. Uh, Hajime no Ippo takes place in eighty eight. Oh no, no, not that one. I'm talking about Megalobox. Oh no, Megalobox came out like a couple years ago. Okay, that's what. Okay, that's why I'm getting confused. Know. That's why I'm getting confused. Okay, so Megalobox is I'm mixing Megalobox with Hami no Ippo. Okay, so I'm sorry. Let me apologize. So no, Me- no, no, no. So Megalobox uh, is also a good anime because they're coming out with another one called Nomad. Um, again, Megalobox is on Crunchyroll and Hulu now because um, Hulu is starting to pick up animes. Which for anybody that's never paid attention to animes. That was the only reason why a lot of people honestly got Netflix and Hulu at first. Because they used to carry a crap load of animes. And then, of course, Crunchyroll came along and Funimation started purchasing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, animes. And now it's kind of spread out among the big uh, four. So, um, like I said, plenty of anime out there to watch. It just depends on, it depends on what your flavor is. Uh, but I just try to point out the ones that nobody may not watch or give attention to. But... That's really all that we have for this podcast, guys. So I thank you all I for watching. I was going to ask, what um, are you looking forward to next season? Say what? What are you looking forward to next season? Uh, which anime? No. Which anime? Is what are you looking oh, forward to God. next season? Oh, God. That's a list. Uh, I'm looking for, well, well, aside from Bleach, Bleach, the Thousand Year Blood War. That The Thousand Year Blood War arc, because I've read that manga from beginning to end, and that's number one. It's supposed yeah. to come out. It's supposed to come out sometime this year. It's supposed even, to. Even the author said he's changing stuff that he didn't like the first time around. What? He... Okay. He. I just. Mm. Hmm. Read the manga. I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm like. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole right now because no, no, don't go down the rabbit there was there was there was so much about the Thousand Year Blood War that I loved. I can see some areas that he may want to change just because it's being adapted for animation. I can see that, but as long as as long as five things don't change, five things that actually make the story great: um, Kimpachi story, Ichigo's transformation, um, um, the actual storytelling of the Quinchies. Uh, and of course, what happens to the thirteen the thirteen uh the thirteen uh court squad captains? Yeah. So that's four. I'm missing one. I'm missing one. Oh, and what truly happens with Ichigo's father? So if those five things don't change, okay, cool. I can live with the rest. But to me, to me, those five things of that story made the story. Um, but uh, aside from Bleach, I'm looking forward to. Um, there was a few more. There's supposed to be another Blue Exorcist because they actually want to continue the story from that. Um, there's supposed to be another um, crap. It was rumored at this point that they may come with a new Ronin Warriors. They did not. Oh, that's cool. They did. Of course, that is a rumor. Hasn't been confirmed. Um, but they are noticing that the trademarks for Running Warriors was just recently reissued. So that's kind of with a grain of salt situation. Um, I'm trying to think of all the other animes that are coming out. Because right now there's a there's really a good a good amount. But no. I mean as far as those ones I can think off the top of my head, those are the ones I'm looking to mo- looking to more the uh, most. I'm looking forward to the reboot of Shaman King. They're actually gonna go is it this year or next year? It's next week. Oh wow, okay. 
or a week after next. I know it's the first weekend in April. It's Easter weekend. I think that's when the new season starts. Okay. Uh, I am looking forward to the new Vanguard series. That looks interesting. Haven't seen uh, that, but I'm going to And that. the continuation of SSS Gridman with SSS uh, Dynazenon. Hmm, okay. If you don't know what uh, SSS Dynam Gridman is, you remember Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad? Yeah, Gary Mann's very for same line. Yeah. Yeah, same thing. It, It's the new anime adaptation to that. Gotcha. I must say, that sounds familiar. I just haven't, I just, I just haven't really watched a lot. I'm trying to keep up with everything and read is just, and then you know, because my girlfriend got me a Switch, and I just ordered a whole bunch of Zelda games, so I cannot wait for them Sons of Guns to show up. And I forgot that I'm still on the family show. Um, <laughs> I almost said something I wasn't supposed to say. So yeah, my my week is gonna be full. But but anyway, we got yeah, we gotta call this. So we're already an hour thirty into this. So Joe, anything that you want to talk about or plug before we call it a night, man? Uh, I'm going to be hunting on Monster Hunter. If you guys need uh, someone to hunt with or someone to help teach, I am more than happy to do that for you. I will be looking out for you when my when my when my copy shows up. Because every because unfortunately I ordered through Amazon. Uh, nope, nope, that's wrong. That's wrong. I ordered Zelda through GameStop. I'm sorry, I ordered Zelda through Amazon. So that's definitely going to be here sometime this week. Uh, but unfortunately, I had to go through Monster. Hunter. I had to go through GameStop because. They're, they're the only ones that actually had a copy I can get for my Switch. So, um, so yeah, when I definitely get Monster Hunter, I am definitely reaching out to you on my Switch for that. Um, but aside from that, guys, like I said before, nothing has really changed here. Uh, as you can see, it was me and Joe so basically talking about everything that we love fandom-wise. The link at the bottom that you see there in red, if you copy and paste that into a browser, it will take you to my link tree for all of my YouTube and Facebook pages for each of my shows uh, for uh, How the Fracker Got Here, Get Bit, and the Offense Podcast. So definitely like, share, and subscribe from there, guys. Don't forget about my buddy, Big BZA Dot, on Facebook. He will actually be... Uh, Back to broadcasting very soon. Actually, next week, April the 4th, actually. So definitely look for him, Big BZA Dot, on Facebook. Like, share, and subscribe from there. And definitely go to his video section to see uh, when he will be broadcasting. As I said before, it will be April the 4th, which will put that uh, Sunday. So actually, uh, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, he'll be back to broadcasting again. And of course, don't forget about my travel page at Uncle Obi's Adventures and more on Facebook because your boy does do travel. So wherever you're trying to get to, whether it's down the street, across the state, or across the pond, I can definitely help you with that. So definitely look me up, Uncle Obi's Adventures and more on Facebook or just me, William Buchanan, on Facebook and let me know what I can do for you guys. Um, aside from that, like I said before, guys, let's keep it clean. I, I want to say this because I was trying to think of a closing statement for Get Bit. Um, Guys, look, we are all fans of, of what we love and protect and cherish, but let's not be toxic. I'm not calling out Snyder fans because Snyder fans are just as passionate as every other fandom out there. What I'm talking about is, guys, is that we don't want to be able to take something that we love, that is pure, that is great, that we all enjoy, and turn it into something nasty and horrible and just where nobody wants to do with that. I mean, we saw it with Star Wars. Though, I mean, whether you loved or hated the, epi the episode one, two, or three, whether you loved or hated the uh, Disney series with The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, no matter how you felt about it, we are still glad these movies still can get produced. Even the same sense as for me, when I talk about the Snyderverse, yes, I still have my hangups about about Snyder and him directing, but at the same time, uh, we are still happy that these movies are still getting made, and we should be thankful for that, because there was one point in time where we did not have superhero movies because they were seen as, quote-unquote, a joke, not profitable, and nobody ever watched them. My have those times have changed. So what I'm saying, guys, is whether you love it or hate it, let's actually uh, be respectful of other people's opinions and not make it to anything more than that because we're all fans. So let's just be that way. That's all I'm saying. Um, but with that being said, guys, like I said before, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you're watching this on the playback, please comment if it's live. Definitely check out Get Bit on Facebook and YouTube. Check out buddy uh, Joe Total Justice Gaming on um, all his platforms, especially if you have Monster Hunter because... I'm gonna actually because when I get my when I get my switch set up and I get what I want uh, as far as my setup goes, I am going to stream uh, along with Joe and hopefully Shadow and anybody else that has Monster Hunter, and we're actually gonna do a stream on this channel of us playing. So um, hold the jokes because I am a newbie to Monster Hunter. 
So I expect I'll be doing a lot of mess ups. <laughs> no, that's actually one of the best things about Monster Hunter is with the, from what I've been with mm-hmm. for Ultra World is this is probably one of the most positive, uh, helpful communities you will ever be a part of because mm-hmm. everyone understands like, oh, he chose this. And that's, uh, it's like if you get the insect glaive, oh, he's a first time glaber and he's never fought a monster. Okay, nope, that's cool. We'll teach him. Cool. I mean, it's not like how Destiny was. Destiny, Destiny, not Destiny 2, but Destiny's, uh, Destiny's, uh, when it first started was just the same way. I mean, you pick a, you can pick a warlock or a titan or a hunter and it's like, okay, we'll show you how to use them. So, I mean, if it's that positive, I got no issue with that. Um, but yeah, well, that being said, guys, like I said before, uh, we do thank you all for watching and this has been Get Bit, uh, for tonight. And, uh, aside from that, um, I need a better catchphrase than good night. <laughs> I need a better catchphrase. But anyway, guys, thank we'll you. Workshop it. Say what? We'll workshop it. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure that out. But anyway, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We are out. Have a good night. Take care of each other. Take care of each other. We'll get through this. Peace.